Okay, so now that you've gotten your 25 responses, I've just got 12, this is just an example questionnaire. We need to firstly save the questionnaire itself for the teacher to be able to mark and secondly download your responses. So I would recommend that you preview this questionnaire in order to be able to save it. So because now one can see the questionnaire clearly and then you can go click over there. You can choose print and the destination needs to be save as PDF or you can see if Microsoft print to PDF looks better either way. And then you can look over here on more settings whether it looks better with or without the header and footer. Maybe it looks better without it. It's up to you and background graphics includes the pictures um, or the color or whatever that you used at the background. Just check that you can see all the questions. That's cut off a little bit, but it's okay. I'm just going to see if this one doesn't maybe do it a bit better. Oh, no, it ends up the same. Okay, it's up to you. I mean, if, you, if you're a perfectionist, you're more than welcome to actually take screenshots of the previewed document, of the previewed form and actually paste them in the Word document, save it then as a PDF, something like that. But I think this is suitable because it's just so that one can actually see the questions. All right, so I'm going to click on print and I'm going to choose where to save it. And just give it a suitable file name, um, something about your questionnaire form for phase two. All right, now you can go back to your actual questionnaire and where you have your responses. As I said earlier, you can then say view responses in Sheets because we've already, already created it in Sheets. For this one, I made a mistake and I did actually not split the name and surname beforehand, but let's just imagine I did. All right, so I'm going to click on File, Download as Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to save that in my pet folder, phase two. Now I'm going to leave it as responses, fur babies questionnaire responses, save. Let's edit it and we just need to fix it up because we're going to use the same thing for access as well, the same data. So we need to do a few fixes before we can use it in access anyway. So first off, what we need to do is we need to shorten the questions that we have at the top here. That's very, very important. The other thing is you won't be able to import this questionnaire data if there is a space at the beginning of the sentence. That's what it looks like. You have to be very careful of that. It's going to give you errors when you import it. Um, and you need to make the question substantially shorter, like in, I'd say, a maximum of five words. So work on that, make your questions um, substantially shorter, and then we can look at finalizing this one that we can import into Access. Now, you'll see that I've also removed the question mark from every question. Just keep it as short as possible. You have to still have an idea about what the question was. All right, now we want to save a separate version of this Excel responses that it can be imported into Access. In order to do that, we actually have to create a birthday field for all the respondents. And we'll have to use date functions in order to put this back together again. Now, firstly, what you'll need to do is you'll have to use a VLOOKUP to assign a number to every month and then you can put it back together again with the date function. If you need any help, consult your teacher or your textbook. Okay, so I've just manually split the name and surname fields and I've done my date of birth over here. Now, this spreadsheet, I don't want to do any kind of formatting on it yet because if we want to import it into Access, we're actually going to need the data very raw like this. So I'm going to save it as to import just for myself for later. Okay, so there is my one copy. 
Then I'm going to save it as again and call it questionnaire analysis. Okay, so just to be sure, you've got it here now, you understand what I'm doing. I've got one that has absolutely no changes in it. It's my raw data that I've downloaded. I've got a second one to import that I'm not going to carry on working now. And I've got a third one, the questionnaire analysis, and that's the one I'm going to continue working on now. And now I can do formatting and everything else that I need to do in my questionnaire on my data. All right, so be sure that you're now working in the questionnaire analysis before you continue. Please leave the functions that you've done to compile the dates of birth because this is what is going to earn you a lot of marks now. All right, so now that we're working on the formatting part of things, you'll have to make a few tabs at the bottom because we want to have different worksheets. We're going to have a worksheet for your data, a worksheet for your analysis, a worksheet for graphs and a worksheet for other if you want to do the there's one mark for analyzing data other than Excel. Next up we need to look at the formatting of this specific page. There are a few marks for formatting. There's one mark that says it looks good. You format it in a way that it actually looks pretty. Now Personally, I'd recommend actually using a table style for that. It really makes your life so much easier than trying to do the whole formatting thing yourself. If you don't like the colors that are available over here, you can also have a look at just changing the theme on the page layout tab before you insert a table style. Now, once you've applied a table style, I just recommend that you actually then convert it back to a range. You'll see it says table tools design. It has things like the drop down arrows here. Um, it makes it difficult when you do functions, then it refers. You'll see if I do, I'm going to just do a sum, which you shouldn't do on a set of birthdays, but you'll see it does like a subtotal function. It doesn't even do a normal one and it doesn't refer to the cells. It refers to the range with a name basically turns it into a table like you would use an access. So it's better to actually just use this trick for the formatting and then convert it back to a range. So then you can just stand anywhere in your table and say convert to range and then it actually applied the formatting but it's not a table anymore. Now the other things you need to look at is to make all the columns big enough that you can read the content in the column but not that big that it's unnecessarily big like this birthday it's really unnecessarily big so make all the columns small enough that it's clear that you can read what it is in there and um, when you have data that's very short but your headings may be a bit longer you can consider applying something like wrap text Lastly, to help people know what the spreadsheet is about immediately when they open it up, I would say it's ideal to add an extra row at the top and actually include a nice big heading that has something to do with your actual questionnaire. Now this one also needs to be formatted in a way that it actually goes together with the table that you have. So have a look at the styles that are available here. Maybe um, if you've got, I've, I used this color, then maybe that's a good color to use or title would actually even be better. And then I can just make the row a little bit larger. Now the big thing with the formatting where you're going to lose your marks is you need to do this same kind of formatting everywhere on every single tab. It can't just be on one tab. You'll have to do this. You can't choose a different color for another tab. You have to use the exact same color scheme, font sizes, borders, shading, colors, everything on every single tab. Now, if you don't want to use the format as table tool and you can and you want to do all of this by yourself, then keep in mind that you have to choose an appropriate font. The font size mustn't be too big. Borders must be appropriate, so it can't be thick borders everywhere. Yeah, basically like that and the headings need to stand out suitably.